Landfill, also known as Toys to Life video games. Not only the title of this video, but also the best way to waste your money. Now, the concept of a Toys to Life game might seem cool on paper, but it's surprisingly annoying in practice. The whole thing is that you have figurines with an NFC tag in them that you can put on some sort of reader that is connected to the console you're playing on. If you put the figurine on the reader, something happens in the game. In most cases, this means that you can play as the figure you put on the reader. The issue is that most of the games designed around it want you to switch to the most fitting character every two minutes. Every time you want to switch, you have to stand up, grab the figure, sit back down, put it on the reader and watch an animation. Some games even have different worlds locked behind figures that cost extra money. And that's the big thing, you have to pay more real money on top of the game you already paid for to get the full experience. It's loot boxes all over again, but then before loot boxes. Today, I'll be going over four different game franchises that use this mechanic. Skylanders, Disney Infinity, LEGO Dimensions, and Starlink Battle for Atlas. Skylanders, 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 Skylanders. The Skylanders series consists of six very similar games and 350 damn figures made by Toys for Bob between 2011 and 2016. First, the very first game in the series. What a surprise. Its mere title already leaves a bad taste. Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. Yes, that Spyro. Spyro the Dragon. Oh, look at how they massacred my boy. Oh, don't worry, it's gonna get way worse in future games. Spoiler alert, Crash Bandicoot, Dr. Neo Cortex, Donkey Kong, and Bowser are in later games. But we'll get to that when we talk about those, don't you worry. This game was the very first of its kind in the Toys to Life genre. Wikipedia says that there are some Toys to Life games before Skylanders, but Wikipedia also says the NES is Rob the Robot as a form of Toys to Life, so I don't know what to think. The game lays the groundwork for the rest of the series and other Toys to Life games after. You have Figurine. Put Figurine on Portal of Power trademark. Play video game. And it also lays the groundwork for all of the issues with this. It's called the Portal of Power. And why is this thing so massive? Sure, multiplayer exists, but there's still a ton of extra room on the portal with two figures on it. Though this portal does have something cool that, now I think of it, none of the other competition does. You can put the figurine anywhere on the portal and it just works. Later on, we'll see that this is rarer than you may think. Come to think of it, that technology might be patented. I can see that's why the others don't do this, though you'd have to be pretty selfish to patent NFC, but anywhere in a slightly bigger area than usual. Anyway, this game has 32 characters that all have their own moves and are visually extremely varied. Gameplay-wise, not so much though. The characters either have a melee or range attack, or both. In the case that they only have one of those, the other one is something slightly more original. Most of the time, some sort of controllable attack or minions of some sort. The characters consist of different elements that, of course, have areas where they are stronger and special gates to make sure that you want at least one of each element. This is fine in my opinion. I mean, in a Toys to Life game, you want some incentive to buy the figures, but this game isn't evil about it. You can easily play the entire game with just the starter pack, or hell, even one character. Since they level up, that could even be a pretty good strategy. All figures can also be upgraded on two different paths. This is the purpose of all the money in the game. You can use it for some decently useful upgrades that can slightly shake up a character's moveset. Perfectly good addition in my opinion, easy to implement, but makes the characters more useful and fun to play with for an extended time in the case you're a normal person and don't have a big variety of figures on standby. The game consists of various levels and enemy types, and the gameplay is most akin to a beat-em-up with multiplayer support up to two players. Like all Toys to Life games, it's obviously made for kids, although the game can definitely be fun for all ages on higher difficulties. The story isn't anything to write home about, but the antagonist Chaos is one of the best things about this franchise. He serves as both the main baddie and the comic relief in this one. In this game, his comedy isn't that great yet, his design is also in its infancy, but by the third or fourth game, he is incredible. He's the only good thing about the latest Superchargers game. Holy shit, reviewers gave this game a 9 out of 10. Reviewers, please come down with the ridiculously high ratings. Uh, how about my rating, though? This is the first game in the series, and I think it deserves credit for going all in on its creative idea. 5 out of 9. 
It does exactly what it sets out to do, to be an enjoyable experience for kids, and with the multiplayer, a sibling or parent could easily join in and have at least a decent time playing the game. Oh god. Oh god. Gordon, what have you done? Let's move on to the second game. Skylanders Giants is very similar, but now with some bigger Skylanders that cost more money. They also introduced two new types of Skylanders, Series 2, which are just better versions of the original figures, and Light Core, which are figures that have LEDs in them. Aside from a slightly improved battle arena, that's it. Oh, and this game managed to get a 9.2 on Metacritic. This game is almost unchanged from the first one. Well, okay, credit where it's due, the later new Super Mario Bros. games are also all the same thing and also got stupidly high ratings as well. But, back to games that do not identify themselves as soup. I give this game a 3 out of 9 for sheer laziness. It deserves almost half the points for the sheer lack of creativity here. By this point, the first game could be way cheaper and give practically an identical experience. But, on the good side, the game does have charm and achieved its goal of appealing to kids and being a decent time waster for adults. Does the microphone still work? Yes, it does. We are living in the best timeline. Third one up now, Skylanders Swap Force. In this game, you're able to swap out the top and bottom halves of Skylanders and combine their abilities. Wait, I was just reading the Wikipedia article and they're saying that you can now jump? Were you seriously not able to jump before? I thought the whole point was exploration. How do you explore without a jump feature? Anyway, this game apparently introduced it, allowing for, again, better exploration. Although, one issue, because of the double Skylanders, a new proprietary portal is used. Bit of a bummer, but I don't see how they could have done the swap forcing without a new portal. But hey, there's at least an interesting gimmick now, and it's kind of fun to see what you can make with the combinations, especially since the upgrades work separately for the top and bottom halves, requiring you to really think about the upgrades that you pick. Or at least a little more than before. You know what? 6 out of 9. Feeling generous. This game is the first one I even think about recommending playing today. From this game onwards, the polish is much better and there's more to do. And again, it does what it sets out to do. After Swap Force comes Trap Team. This is the game that I fully play through, and it's just more of the same. The new gimmick this time round is being able to buy even more plastic to trap the bosses after you fight them, after which you can play as them for a limited time. Again, a new portal is used, and this time I think it wasn't necessary. Just put a base on the traps, no need to show off with a transparent base. It's a cooler gimmick than giants at least, but the fact that you have to get a trap for every single element kinda sucks. Oh, and if you thought this game didn't have any new Skylanders, you're wrong and you owe me an apology. There are 18 new normal Skylanders and also 18 new Trap Master Skylanders. The only feature of these characters is that they can open very large doors. The Traptanium Portal is what the game calls them. I absolutely despise these. Sure, they only have cosmetics behind them, but why only the Trap Masters? If it was all Skylanders, like the previous games, by the way, it would be better. But okay, sure, Activision needs you to buy more figurines, so I guess it's fine. The portal now has a speaker in place that is used by the villains you trap on occasion. It adds a lot of personality to them, but as a headphone user, I wish you could just set this to go through the audio and the HDMI instead. You don't want other people to know you're playing Skylanders, do you? I guess I'll give this game a 5 out of 9 just for the fact that you need to buy a piece of plastic to play as Chaos. Wait, that was already the case? Uh, 5.5 then. Now, Supercharges is a very different one for the fact that it has Donkey Kong. Need for Speed can't say that! Look, it says Donkey Kong Edition, not featuring Donkey Kong. That would be ridiculous! Though Need for Speed in this game have surprisingly got something in common. Cars. No, not the movie. No, not the game either, and definitely not the Wii version. This game has vehicles. You can drive a car as Donkey Kong. Okay! That's it! Gaming has peaked! I give up! Again, new portal. The figurines are massive, so fine, but you could have made them smaller and just used the normal one. But fine, I'll give you that one. The elephant in the room, the Wii and Wii U versions of this game come with Bowser and Donkey Kong. Why? Like, yeah, these are cool, I guess, and they work as amiibo, that's pretty neat, but 
Why? I also want to take a quick detour to the story for this game specifically. Chaos. The main villain, if you forgot. I don't blame you, by the way. He is so well characterized here. His personality in the previous games was mostly just loud and angry. Though this time, he has someone he can be scared of. And the dynamic between him and the sentient cloud he creates, the darkness, is just Great. If you have 20 minutes to spare, you can watch the cutscenes with Chaos from the game. I can promise they're at least a little bit funny. 6 out of 9 for sheer creativity and writing with this one. And the final Chaos theme is a bop, by the way. And we're already at the last Skylanders game. 2016 is when Imaginators released. Doesn't feel that long ago, to be honest. And the game does actually do something cool for once. A character creator. I really wish there was some way to make your figurine for this, whether that be a website where you could order one or directly through the game. It would have made for a nice touch, but this is way more manageable and there can be way more options this way. This time, there's basically no excuse for using a new portal. This is not necessary. The creator characters are just normal NFC doodads and have no special tech in them that couldn't be read with the Gen 1 portal. Boo. This game's also the introduction to Crash Bandicoot and Dr. Neil Cortex. These are fine additions, they belong to Activision, sure, why not? And the game gets that same rating, 4.5 out of 9, exactly down the middle. It's fine. You might have noticed that I didn't really talk about the gameplay for these games, and that's because they are really incremental upgrades. All of these play basically the same as Spyro's Adventure did. Let's just go to the next one. Second on the chopping block is Disney Infinity. This game consists of three different titles that I do not know the difference between. Disney Infinity, Disney Infinity 2.0, and Disney Infinity 3.0. Are the figures forwards compatible? Backwards compatible? Are the sets forwards compatible? I have no idea. I think some figures are compatible with the later games, but then others might not be because some sets aren't. I have no idea how this works. And don't you worry about this part being shorter because there are less games, because oh boy did this game leave a bad impression on me. Wow. The whole idea is that instead of the way that Skylanders works, giving you the whole game, only requiring the figures for characters, you need a playset piece to play the games, this time based on some sort of Disney or Pixar movie. Without these pieces, you can only play in the toy box, a place where you can make your own games with the tools provided to you. I don't mind this system as much as others may, because the individual playsets have the potential to be a lot more varied and interesting than the gameplay loop of Skylanders. Though I don't think I'm asking too much when I want these games to be a little bit more than they are. 90% of the quests are just some sort of fetch quest or escort mission, or even the game just saying go here and absolutely nothing else. The other small amount are the specific type of mission for the playsets. For the Incredibles, this is pressing the punch button on some robots, and in the Cars playset, it's playing a better game. Also, I do intend on doing a review of all the Cars games one day, when the time comes. Aside from this, you have these special challenges, and look at that, I hate these too. They have three difficulties, but you have to unlock each one by playing the last. This means that you have to play all of the challenges three times total. Why not just have a system where you get a rating depending on how many collectibles you have, or what time you have? This is absolutely padding for playtime, and it's just not fun. By the time the challenges get difficult, you've already played that same challenge twice. Anyway, the game's relative repetitiveness isn't the worst thing I encountered in my playthrough. Oh no, I wish that was it. The game just flat out stopped functioning properly. I started out playing the Cars toy set, and after a little bit more than an hour in, I got a mission to catch these hot rods on the road in the Radiator Springs town area. The issue was, none of the small toy NPCs spawn in this area. I'd noticed this before, but just thought that more NPCs would show up after time. After the game gave me this quest, it couldn't give me the marker because the thing it was supposed to mark didn't exist. There were plenty of these NPCs in the farm section, but here it just gave up. Yes, this save is now softlocked, and even restarting from the beginning won't help. Uh, hello? It is me from the future. I tried to get footage of, you know, those bugs on the Wii version, and it's been a while since I've played the Wii version, uh, because I got most of the footage on the PC version, which has, like, you know, it looks nicer and stuff like that. Uh, but, I just popped in the disc again. It's It's been, like, what, like, a couple of mu Actually, it's been more like a year since I last played this. Popped in the disc, it, it, it's in there. 
Here's the portal, yeah, fully connected with, with the cable, there you go, into the back of the Wii U. I tried the other two ports on the front as well, it just doesn't detect it. What happened here? What happened? <laughs> what changed? What did I break? <laughs> I didn't plug, plug this portal into anything else, well, I plugged it into my PC once, I think, the test for the PC version. Like, what, did that break it? This is the Wii portal, I used this and it worked, and it doesn't anymore, so... On with the video, I guess. Yep, some dipshit on the Wii version's development team decided that the main NPCs do not spawn in the main area of the playsets. I have searched the internet far and wide and I have no idea why this happens. This, for me at least, happens in the other three playsets I have as well. No posts, no Reddit mention, no anything. Is it just this copy of the game that's broken? Did that dipshit developer specifically target me? Like, it, it, it can't be. When I when I look up Disney Infinity Softlock NPC, it it, it it shows up in the search bar, but then, then there's no results. Others must be having this issue too, right? Though, a couple of days later, I found out that apart from having per playset saving, the game also has general saves that carry over to the toy box. And that save was somehow glitched, so that the toy NPCs only spawn outside of the main area of each playset. I started a new save, and this fixed the issue. The only thing I lost was the two or so hours of gameplay I already had. Hooray, right? Well, not entirely. After another three to four hours of play, I got a quest in the car's playset to go back to the main area of Radiator Springs, a type of mission you get numerous times in every playset. But before I went back, I saved and quit the game because it was getting late. The next day when I launched the game again, I went back to the main area expecting the mission to clear like usual when nothing happened. Huh, weird. What happens when I turn on the mission marker? It tried to get me to go back to the racetrack area I came from. Alright then, I'll try again. Nope, it still doesn't work. Let's try and go to all the areas connected to Radiator Springs and go there from those locations? Nah, game is soft-locked. Again. Luckily, this soft-lock is specific to the car's playset. And luckily, that was the playset I played the most and had the most interest in. You can guess that I stopped playing the game after this. But these aren't all the glitches I encountered. Oh no, I wish. Um... Constant right input no matter the controller, physics that makes sense, immense lag, load times close to Sonic 06, a you have no quest dialogue despite normally always being able to search quest givers, camera works, oops, no it doesn't, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. These are smaller issues I could excuse if it weren't for the two soft locks that just show how much of a problem this is. <laughs> and you thought Fallout 76 was bad. Apart from that, these games are, though a little one-dimensional, perfectly acceptable for kids or people who really have nothing else to do. The rating for this game is pretty hard to give. If it weren't for all the glitches, I think the game perfectly sets out for what it wants to do. Though not that well, it basically just passes the bare minimum. But with all the glitches, the game becomes literally unplayable. That's why I would probably give the game roughly a 2 if I, this was the only version that existed. But let's give the other versions the benefit of the doubt and give it somewhat more what I would give it, though a little bit lower. 4 out of 9. Now for LEGO. They made their own game, but they entered the party so late that the game only lasted two years. 2015 to 2017. Yeah, that isn't all too long, especially considering that Skylanders lasted from 2011 to 2017, though that game had like five titles, which is sort of reflective of how short these games really last. Now, I didn't play this game, so you might say, Sandal, how are you going to review a game you didn't play? Well, I couldn't find it for a good price, okay, let me be. 
No, that doesn't mean I've never played a LEGO game before, these are all the same. These games play in a very similar way to Skylanders and to an extent Disney Infinity, a lot of beat em up energy and some puzzles to boot. There are collectible coins in various colours, these unlock a variety of cosmetics and bonus content in the games, but I think you can only buy stuff like hats in LEGO Dimensions specifically. Because, you guessed it, the characters are actual little Lego figurines! This is probably the only real thing the game has going for it, as even the portal you place the figurines on is a Lego set you have to build yourself. This is a good thing in the same way that building IKEA furniture is a good thing. It's not! No, I care, of course. At least 99% of the population likes building Lego, it's even one of our rights if I'm not mistaken. But, well, this sort of falls apart as a Lego set. What are we even building here? It's some sort of portal, but compare this to building a car or even Hogwarts, it's just isn't a good display piece in the way that other Lego sets are. And building the figurines just feels like them trying to cut corners, like it's four pieces to build, that is not a Lego set. Well, how about that character selection then? Well, it's better than the other ones. I mean, we have stuff like Back to the Future, Harry Potter, Doctor Who, and Lord of the Rings represented. But we also have stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog and Portal. Why are there video game characters in my movie and TV show crossover game? Why is there Sonic? Why is he plastic? Who did this to you, Roger Craig Smith? This game improves on Disney Infinity by allowing you to play as any character in any of the sets. Emphasis on allowing, because to complete various puzzles or missions, you'll need one of the main characters. While I would have wished to just see all characters usable, the alternative would have been to give all the characters the same moveset, and that is much worse. What also confuses me is that this game features characters from series that already have a LEGO game, like Harry Potter and Batman. These franchises have multi-game series of LEGO games. Now how about that rating, eh? Well, when everything is said and done, the game is sort of the worst of both worlds. The stuff you're displaying isn't really display worthy, but the gameplay is basically just the same as any other LEGO game, which are a dime a dozen as is. I think a 4 out of 9, maybe a 5 out of 9 is probably in order. You could probably say this game is a jack of all traits when it comes to Toys to Life titles, but a master of none. Let's rock and roll, boys! Yeah, I didn't play this one. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I legitimately forgot it existed. The one Starlink fan would be furious if only actual people watched this video. Well, around 2016 to 2017, most of these games were discontinued, and it's not hard to see why. Skylanders alone had 350 unique figures that all take up physical space. Heck, even the few that I have are really inconvenient to store. Also, most of these games didn't really have characters that I would describe as display-worthy. Even Disney Infinity, which has the entire Disney pool to pull from, uses figurines that have all the details stripped away for some reason. As for Skylanders, well, most of these characters are only in these games and appear nowhere else with LEGO Dimensions having the same problem as Disney Infinity, but not as bad as LEGO is inherently displayable. Aside from this, the fact that there were so many games made in this genre around the same time made all these problems worse, as every game has its own figures. I'm not just talking about every game series having different figures, because while newer Skylanders games are backwards compatible with all the figures, Disney Infinity has completely different figures and sets for each game. It's obvious that people are starting to get sick of this. But there is, of course, one exception. One major Toys to Life series that is still around today. Nintendo's Amiibo, and it makes sense why the Amiibo is still around, considering all the problems that the other series had. These figures are in the style of their original IP and are surprisingly detailed for the price. This makes them a really good display piece overall. But the best part is that their integration doesn't actually matter in 99% of the games they feature in. Most of the games they unlock skins or can be used to fight like in Super Smash Bros. And in other games still, it doesn't even matter what amiibo you use as long as you have one. Animal Crossing New Horizons is sort of the exception to this, allowing you to use the amiibo cards to get specific characters to live on your island. But 
if you get lucky enough, you can still get these characters, but the fact that Amiibo are compatible with so many games also makes them a much safer investment. I only have one Luigi Amiibo, but I will have the Banjo Amiibo one day. Anyway, that was enough talking about plastic for one day, but it did make me realize something. I had an epiphany. If I make my own Toys to Life game, I'll be rich. <laughs> Maybe I should have reconsidered. What about now? It's time to rock with the biggest Thanks for watching to the end. I hear rumors that if you like and subscribe, you'll get a cookie. I don't know about you, but I'm doing it right away.